Welcome back. Today, let's talk about social media censorship. Recently, there's been a lot of things with Project Veritas and live action, them being banned and suspended. So we're going to talk about all of that, find out why it's important and what it means for, I guess, YouTube and social media in general. Before we do that, make sure you're subscribed so you can always stay informed and get my sources down below. So let's do this. Let's start talking about what Project Veritas is. Now, they are an organization that does, as they like to put it, investigative journalism. Oftentimes that is through some undercover method and they obtain information, sometimes a video or emails about a corporation or organization, and then they release that to the general public and it becomes this big thing. They recently did something with Live Action and Pinterest. Now Live Action is a pro-life organization, so both Live Action and Project Veritas are certainly biased towards the right, just as a disclaimer. Now that doesn't mean that everything they put out is wrong, but it does mean that they're bias to the right, just so you guys know. Now, like I said, they found something with Pinterest and what they, Project Veritas found was that Pinterest actually put live action on a list of websites that includes blocked adult entertainment websites, shall we say. So it put live action on a website, on a list rather, that included all of these other websites that are being blocked and suppressed from Pinterest. Now, to give them a little bit of credit because, and we'll see in a little bit, they claim that it's because of misinformation and possibility of harm. They also have another website on here on the list you can see called trackingvaccinations.com. And if you go there, you find that it says tracking vaccinations down the autism trail. So that leads me to believe that Pinterest didn't choose live action simply because it's a pro-life or right-leaning organization. Instead, they chose it because just like tracking vaccinations, in their view, it was harmful or damaging. Now, you may not agree with that, and I don't, I don't agree with that, but there's at least some logic to it, flawed as it may be. After it came out that Pinterest was essentially suppressing live action, they actually decided to just straight up outright ban them. So live action is no longer allowed on Pinterest whatsoever. Now, the reasoning they gave for this, which I kind of alluded to earlier, is that Pinterest said, we don't allow harmful misinformation, and conspiracies that term in, turn individuals and facilities into targets for harassment or violence. So essentially Pinterest is saying live action was banned because they were using misinformation that could be used as harassment or incitement of violence. Now you may ask yourself what exactly was live action doing that would cause this. So if you look at that same Huffington Post article where this quote comes from, there is a link that goes directly to a specific um, upload that live action put on Pinterest, you can no longer see it, but they also put it on Facebook, and this is what it looks like. It's basically just a meme where you have a baby and you have a couple of, uh, it's a bar graph essentially, where you have a couple of numbers and it says the leading cause of death in America is abortion with 926,000 deaths, directly below that is heart disease with 600,000 and then cancer below that. So essentially live action is using this image to promote the idea that abortion is the leading cause of death in America. Now, you can disagree that abortion is equivalent to death by any other means, and I, I don't, I don't want to get into that in this video, but I do not see the logic in claiming that this meme is in some way inciting violence or making people into targets for harassment. That just is an absurd stretch to me. I'm sorry, that doesn't make any sense. Again, you can disagree with it, and that is okay, but to ban an organization for putting memes like this just seems ridiculous to me. Not to be outdone by Pinterest, Twitter decided to jump into the fray. Now, Project Veritas, in their initial investigation into Pinterest, also found that there were several Pinterest employees who referred to people like Ben Shapiro, who was a right-wing political commentator, as white supremacists. Now, for finding that and then releasing that information, Twitter, who claimed that they released private information, even though Project Veritas says that they did not, Twitter decided to temporarily suspend them. So they're not completely banned, but they are still suspended temporarily from Twitter. However, we're still not quite done with all of this censorship. YouTube decided to jump into the fray as well. Now, Project Veritas's investigation was released in the form of a YouTube video, which is now completely removed. You can no longer find the YouTube video that they, they made where it talked about live action and everything we've talked about here so far. It's been completely removed. But that's still not all that they did. There are people like Tim Pool 
who is a political commentator, and I don't quite know how to describe him. He's not on the right, but he's not really very far on the left. Let's call him a centrist for the purposes of this video. And he generally has very well formed, and he's very logical. He made a video talking about all of this, and as you can see in the title of the video immediately afterwards, that video had been removed. So he made a video talking about YouTube taking down live the Project Veritas' video about live action, and the video he made about that removed video was also removed. He also says that Steven Crowder had a similar experience, which I haven't verified, but the very fact that these videos about an original video are being removed, this just, it continually gets worse and worse. Social media censorship is becoming more and more of a problem. Now, the part about this besides the obvious censorship that is really troubling is that these social media platforms don't express very well what their policies are, or if they do, they still take action against you for not having broken the policies. Like we talked about in the video with Steven Crowder and the Vox Adpocalypse, just linked right here, and right here with Tim Pool, in neither instance did those individuals violate a YouTube policy, and yet YouTube decided to take action against them anyway, by demonetizing them or removing their videos completely. So it's becoming much more difficult to know where you can actually be and still be in their good graces. This censorship is just getting worse and worse, and I'm not entirely sure where YouTube is going to end up with this, so I've started trying to use BitChute, and we will see how that goes. So thank you, everybody, for watching this video. If it's still up, I really appreciate it that you made it all the way to the end. Again, make sure you subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.